How to Sew the Luxury Velvet Shopper by Amber Makes. Follow me and I'll show you how to make this beautiful velvet shopper. It's fully lined, available in a choice of prints. Just sling it over your shoulder and you're ready to shop. Cutting out. Take the velvet panel from your kit and you will see that all the pieces are printed on and they're labelled. You need to cut out all of the pieces around the outer lines, the seam allowances are included, and then pin the relevant label to the top edge of the right side of each piece so you remember which piece is which during assembly. You'll also have some lining your fa fabric in your kit that will need cutting out. So once you've cut out all the pieces, you'll see they'll look like this. The bottom of the front out and back outer have cut out corners. Make sure you cut those out. They're used to box the bottoms of the bag. So you can see I've cut these out here. You'll have two pieces for the handles. And you'll have two facing pieces, a front facing and a back facing. This sits inside the bag and just makes an attractive finish. Now we've printed these a little bit longer than necessary so that you can cut them for an absolutely accurate fit. It works better to cut these afterwards. So the instruction, the in measurement is in the instructions. You need to trim them to 16 and a quarter inches in length. You'll also have all the charm pieces. There are enough pieces here to make two charms to hang on your bag. Once you've cut out the lining fabric, all the measurements for this are in the instructions. Don't forget on the front lining and the back lining that you need to cut out the bottom corners to match the front and back outer to create the box bottom. But once you've cut out the front lining and the back lining following the measurements in the instructions, you can then cut out the two pocket pieces, the pocket front and the pocket back. Again, the measurements for this are in the instructions. And you'll also have a zip for the pocket. Adding the pocket. The pocket is attached to the lining of the bag. So take the pocket front and on the wrong side, measure one and a half inches down from the top edge and draw a line all the way along. Now measure and mark quarter of an inch below this and then another line quarter of an inch below the second. So you've got three lines spaced a quarter of an inch apart. Now these lines need to measure six inches in length and be placed centrally. So if you fold it in half and make a little crease to find the centre, and I'm put a mark there so I don't forget, then if you measure three inches to the right of this line and draw a vertical line across the three lines you've drawn and measure three inches to the right of the line the other way and draw across, then your box is six inches in length. I'm just double checking here but you can see the box is now six inches in length also draw little diagonal lines going from the outer corners of the box to meet the central line these will be cutting lines now take the back lining and place it right sides up so you've got the cut out corners at the bottom and the top straight edge at the top fold it in half to find the center by matching up the raw side straight edges and make a little crease and that just marks the centre. You can also place a mark here as well to remind you. Now take the mark pocket front, place it right sides down on top, matching up the centre mark of the pocket front with the centre mark of the back lining. Smooth it all out so the top raw edges are matching and then pin together all the way around the box. If you pin at least a half an inch outside of the box, then you can keep these pins in place while you're stitching. It just makes it easier to keep everything steady. So I'm just pinning the pocket front here now to the back lining. Now you need to stitch the two pieces together all the way around the outer edge, as you can see here, of the drawn box. So not the central line or the diagonal lines, but just the outer edge. Once that's done, it will look like this. I'm just showing you on the other side. You'll have a rectangular box. Now you can remove those pins. Now we're going to cut along the central line. So if you fold both pieces of fabric in half, make a small snip just to cut through all of the layers and then open it out. You can then put your scissors into the snip 
and cut along the central line up to the edges of the diagonal lines and then just trim along the diagonal lines but make sure you don't cut into the stitching just cut right next to it but not actually into it work on one side at the time so then put your thing, your scissors into that snip cut along the central line and snip along those little diagonal lines now to help this post box opening stay open and flat place it on your ironing board and just fold back the top the seam that you've cut of the pocket front just fold that back over and press it this just helps you to get the seam on the edge when you're trying to get the seam of a post box opening on the edge it can be a little bit fiddly but if you do this pressing before it really helps and also fold open those little triangular flaps on the edges and press the whole thing flat now post the pocket front through the hole that you've made so it comes out through the lining place the lining right sides down and arrange that pocket so it's the back lining and the pocket front are now lying wrong sides facing now you need to press this whole thing flat so that the seams lay right on the edges and the top raw edges match up. I find it easy this stage if you just fold that top bit back and now press this seam open and flat. And then fold that this bottom up and press that seam open and flat. That just makes it a little bit easier to get the seam to lay on the edge. So just arrange that pocket front so that the top raw edges are matching. You'll have to pull it slightly just to even out all the creases and then give it a good press, making sure that the seam lays right on the edge. Once you've done that, it will look like this and you've got a nice neat rectangular opening that you're going to sew the zip to. So take the zip and place it right sides up so the teeth are on the top. Now place that pocket opening, so the post box opening centrally over the zip teeth so that you'll have the zip slider extending a little bit to the left and the metal closure on the right so make sure it's central rearrange the teeth so they're running centrally through and then pin all the way through into the zip pin along the top edge to start with and then pin along the bottom edge and then making sure the zip is laying flat Pin the ends of the zip tape beyond to the right of the post box opening. Now to make the other end stay nice and flat, that's where the slider is, just pin the ends of the zip tape, as you can see here, either side of the slider, because whilst the zip is closed, the zip is the right width. Once you open it, obviously it opens that up. Now push the slider so it's about a little bit away, I've got it about a third of the way along the opening, so you can now see the slider. You can then pin that zip tape into place from the right side and remove those pins from the wrong side. And now you'll know your zip is central and your slider is in the right place to start stitching. I'm just going to move the bottom pins because they're facing the wrong way. It's much easier if the pins are facing the right way so that you can easily remove them as you're sewing so that the ends will be facing you as you're sewing. So it's always easier to just move pins before you start. Now sew all the way around the edge of the post box opening. I sew it about an eighth of an inch inwards from the post box opening. You'll need to move the slider as you do that. And now you can see the zip is neatly inserted. So you now need to trim the ends of the zip tape. So trim them so that they are half an inch outside of the stitching that's because you don't want the ends of the zip tape in the seams when you sew the pocket front and pocket back together so just trim those off and discard those pieces and now your zip is very neatly inserted so take the pocket back and place it right size facing on top of the pocket front now pin the pocket front and the pocket back together but don't pin into the lining just through the pocket front and pocket back because you don't want to be able to see any of this stitching from the right side of the lining piece. So just make sure that you pin only through the pocket pieces 
it makes the pocket more invisible so that on the right side of the lining you'll only be seeing the zip and not any of this stitching. So make sure all the raw edges are matching up. The pocket front and the pocket back are exactly the same size so they will match up nicely. Pin together at the corners and pin together again making sure you're not pinning into the lining and then pin together at that top edge and then pin together between. Now sew the pocket front to the pocket back, down the side, across the bottom and up the other side, making sure you don't stitch into the lining. So you can see I've done that now. Now all you've got left to do is to tack the top of the pocket to the top of the back line. So you're sewing through three layers here. So the zip will have pulled it in slightly, so just pull it out so it all fits nicely. And make sure the raw edges are matching and pinned together. Then tack together within the seam allowance through all those layers. Once you've done that, you've now got a neatly inserted pocket that's in the back lining. You can't see any of the stitching of the pocket from the front and there's your pocket finished and you're ready for the next stage. Making the lining. Now the lining pieces have velvet facings at the top. When you're making a luxury velvet shopper like this, having the velvet facing at the top adds an extra finishing touch that makes it look much more professional. So take the front facing and the front lining and place the front facing at the top and then fold it, lay it on top so it's right sides facing so that you are pinning together the bottom edge of the front facing to the top edge of the front lining. Match up the sides. It will fit exactly because you trimmed the facing when you were doing the cutting out it will fit exactly pin it together either end and then pin together across making sure you keep the raw edges matching up now sew the two pieces together along this edge once you've done that it will look like this now open it out and press open that seam it just helps everything to lay flatter and you'll get a neater finish by pressing it open. Now turn it over to the right side for an optional finishing touch. You can top stitch along the edge of the lining. This helps to keep the um, seam pressed open. You can top stitch along the top edge of the lining and the bottom edge of the facing or just the bottom edge of the facing. I've just top stitched along the bottom edge of the facing here. It just adds a neat finishing touch but you don't need to do this. Now repeat this with the back facing and the back lining. So again, put the back facing. If you place it above the lining, you can make sure it's the right way up. I always place it like this, then fold it over, and then I know I'm joining the right side. It just helps to make sure the facing's the right way up. Pin into place and sew together, and then press the seam open. And again, I've top stitched along the bottom edge of the back facing, just for a neater finish. Now take your front lining with facing attached and your back lining with facing attached and place them right sides facing. Now start by pinning together along the right hand side. First of all, match up the seams that join the facings to the lining. So if you just match them up and then roll them back together, you'll just get a neater finish on the inside of your bag if those seams match up. Make sure the raw edges are matching up as well and then place a pin across that seam to hold that. Then you can pin the top edge of the facings together and then pin together all the way down the side. Make sure you match up the raw edges. So pin up to the cutout corner and then just readjust to make sure that the raw edges are matching up and pin together all the way down this side. Now let's work on the other side, so turn it round and again make sure that you match up this seam that joins the linings to the facings first by rolling them on top of each other. Pin together across the seam and then pin together at the top of the facings. and then pin together all the way down this side. 
up to the end of that cut out corner. Make sure the raw edges are matching up by just adjusting them slightly. Now you need to pin together along the bottom edge, but this we're going to leave a turning gap because this is where we're going to turn the whole bag right sides out. So if you pin together at either end, now fold it in half so that you can find the center. You can measure this, but I find it easier to just fold it in half, make a little crease, and then when you open it out again, there's the center. I'm just putting a mark there. The turning gap is five inches, so if you measure and mark two and a half inches either side of this center mark, that'll be your five inch gap. So place vertical pins at those marks so that you remember that these are the ends of the turning gap. Now you can stitch it together. So start stitching from the top down the side, not round the cutout corners, then across the bottom, leaving the turning gap unstitched, and then leave the cutout corner unstitched, and then all the way up the other side. And then your lining will look like this. So press the seams open at this stage. It just helps to get a neater finish and when you're boxing the corners later. Press the bottom seam open, and that will also press the edges of the turning gap to the inside. So just press that open. If you lay it flat like that, it's easier to do. You can always remove any creases by pressing those out. And that's your lining finished with a beautiful velvet facing across the top edge. Making the handles. The handles are both made in the same way. So we'll start by making one. Remove the label, then fold the handle in half, right sides facing, matching up the long raw edges. So pin together at one end, making sure the short raw edges match up as well. And then pin together at the end, other end, making, the making sure the short and the long raw edges match up. Pin together. And then pin together between. Pin all the way along, making sure that as you pin, you've got those raw long edges matching up. You can use fabric clips instead of pins if you prefer, but I find that this velvet is soft enough to use pins, but clips will hold it just as well. Then once you've pinned it together, sew together all the way along this long edge. And then it will look like this. Press the seam open. Now I'm going to turn it right sides out. So I'm going to use a turning tube. So you have to tack one short end closed. If you don't have a turning tube, then just carefully turn it right sides out. Push the stick in and you'll find it turns out really easily because the velvet's so soft. It just pushes through nicely and then you can turn the whole handle right sides out. Now remove the tacking stitches from that end because they were just to hold it. Now press it so that the seam is laying right on the edge. Just roll it gently between your fingers and press it. Make sure you use a cool iron and then you can press this velvet quite easily. If it's too hot, it can melt it. So just use a cool iron and press it so the seam's on the edge. And then top stitch along both sides. This decorates the handle and also holds it nice and flat. It gives it a bit more structure as well and strength and you'll, the handle will look nicer. Repeat that to make the other handle in exactly the same way. Attaching the handles. Before we attach the handles, we need to sew the front out and the back out together. So take the front out and back out that you cut out and place them right sides facing. This is sewn together in exactly the same way as you did the lining, but with these pieces, you don't need a turning gap. So start with the right hand side, make sure the raw edges at the side and the top are matching up and pin together at the top edge and then pin together at the bottom edge at the top of that cut out corner section. Once you've got the ends pinned together, then you can pin between. Make sure that the raw edges are matching up by just lying them nicely on top of each other 
and just rearranging them so they're all matching as you go. Now pin together along the bottom edge and as with the lining we're not going to be pinning or sewing around the cutout corners. So just pin together on the bottom edge all the way along. and then pin together up the other side, again, matching up the raw edges and pinning together at one end and then the other end. It's quite easy matching up the raw edges with this velvet because it slides nicely when you just want to get it exactly matching. You can just slide it gently with your fingers. Now sew the two pieces together down one side, not round the cutout corner, leave that open. Sew together across the bottom, leave the other cutout corner open and then sew together up the other side. And then it will look like this. I've pressed these seams open. The velvet seams don't stay open brilliantly, but if you press them open, it just helps these outer seam to lay on the outer edge. Now turn the outer pieces that you've joined together right sides out and place them flat. So to attach the handles, just rearrange it slightly so that the side seam is laying like this so you can measure. Take your tape measure and measure three and a half inches inwards from that side seam onto the front outer and place a pin at the top and then a little bit further down, a couple of inches is fine, measure three and a half inches inwards and place a pin. Now take one of your handles and place it so that the seamed edge is on the left hand side and matching up with the pins like you can see here. Also, the short edge needs to extend half an inch above the top raw edge. This just makes the handle more secure and less likely to pull out when you're carrying it. So pin it into place so that the left seamed edge of the handle meets up with those pins. That means the outer edge of the handle will be three and a half inches inwards from the side seam. So pin it into place at the top and then further down where you place the other pin. This is to help keep the handle straight during assembly. If you pin just only across the top, it can skew slightly and then you won't have a straight handle. Now rearrange the side seam on the other side so that you can measure again, three and a half inches inwards to the left of that seam at the top and then a couple of inches below that. It doesn't have to be exact, it's just enough to keep the handle straight. Now run the handle through your fingers so that you know it's straight and place again the seamed edge of the handle against those pins and half an inch extending above the top raw edge. Pin them together at the top. Make sure you only pin through the front outer not into the back outer and then pin together a little bit further down. So that you've now pinned both ends of your handle to the front outer. Now tack it into place just through the front outer, across the top, and then that little bit further down. Use the longest stitch on your sewing machine so you can remove the bottom set of tacking stitches later. You can see I've tacked that handle into place. The top set of tacking stitches will work within the seam allowance so you won't see those. And then when you've done that, attach the other handle to the back outer in exactly the same positions. And there's your handles attached to the bag. Assembling the bag. With the bag outer and the bag outer right sides out and the lining wrong sides out, place the outer inside the lining. And this means that they'll be right sides facing. Tuck the handles to the inside so they're out of the way and don't get caught when you sew them together. Now take the side seam of the outer and match that up with the side seam that's joining the facings. Open up the seam allowances, roll those seams together so they match up exactly, and then pin them together. Now turn it round and match up the other side seam of the outer with the side seam that's joining the facings, roll them together so they match exactly, and pin together.
Now pin them together all the way around the top edge. Tuck the handles to the inside so that they're facing downwards. And then as you pin them together, make sure the raw edges are matching up. And you can see that the ends of the handles are sticking up above the bag, which is what you'd intended. This just makes it extra secure and stops the handles getting pulled out if you've got a, a lot of weight in your bag. So make sure the raw edges are matching up and pin together all the way around the top edges. Once you've pinned it together all the way around the top, sew together all the way around to join the lining to the outer. Once that's done, it will look like this. So you can see I've sewn it together all the way around top, the top. Now pull them apart so that you've got the lining on one side and the outer on the other. And that stitched seam is lying in the center. I'm going to press this open because this seam will be lying right at the top edge of the bag and it's easier to get it lying on the edge if you press it open. So just lay it flat on your ironing board, open it up and press it flat. Now with the velvet, it's, it doesn't press as flat and as easily as it does with the cotton, but by pressing this, it does help make it a lot easier to get it lying on the edge when you finish off the bag. So just do one side and then refold it to make the next section lay flat. You have to do it in about three or four different stages. Again, don't forget to use a cool iron so that you don't melt or damage the velvet and just press that seam open and flat all the way around. And work all the way around until you get back to where you started. Now keep the outer and the lining wrong side out at this stage. Boxing the corners. We're going to start by boxing the outer corners and then we'll box together separately afterwards. Take one of the outer corners and fold it, open up the corner, but then fold it so that the side seam and the base seam are matching up. Open up the seam allowances with your fingers and make sure they sit exactly on top of each other by rolling them across and then pinning together. Once you've anchored those two seams together, lay out the corner, open up the corner and lay it out flat because you want to make sure that the top section and the bottom section are nice and flat with no creases. So just lay it all out by pulling out the sides. You'll have angled corners there and pin together across the top so that the raw edges of that cut out corner are matching up. Now sew together through both layers. Once that's done, your box corner will look like this. Repeat that to box the other outer corner in exactly the same way. Now go to the lining section and box the lining corners in the same way. So open out the corner like this. Place the side seam and the base seam right sides facing so that the seams lay exactly on top of each other. Then pin together at the seams and then open out the corner just like you did with the outer corner. Make sure it's nice and flat and the raw edges are matching and pinned together. And then sew together across this corner. And repeat that to box the other lining corner in the same way. Now we're going to join the outer corners to the lining corners. This makes the lining stay secured in the bottom of the bag. So take the outer corner, follow the seam with your finger all the way along to get to the lining corner and then fold them together like this. So one outer corner to one lining. By following it with your finger, you can make sure you're matching up in the right place. Now match up those two box corners exactly together and pin. By boxing them separately and then join them together, it makes it easier because the velvet's a bit thicker. If you box both sets of corners together, it's trickier. 
So do them separately, but this time sew them together just inside the seam allowance, so about an eighth of an inch from the raw edge. That means this second seam won't interfere or overlap with the first seam. To do the other corner exactly the same way, follow the seam with your finger all the way along to the lining boxed corner and then fold them together, pin them together and sew together. By attaching the lining to the outer in this way, it keeps the lining inside the bag so it doesn't come out, but also it gives the bag a little bit more structure because you've got these extra seams joining them together. There's more structure and you'll get a nicer finish to your bag. So pin those together and again sew together very close to the raw edge so that this seam doesn't overlap. Finishing off. Once you've finished all the boxing, put your hand inside the gap in the lining and put your hand right inside to the outer. And if you grab hold of the bottom of that, turn the whole bag right sides out by pulling the outer out of the turning gap. And once you've pushed it all right, right sides out, fold the edges of the turning gap under so that they meet up and pin together. You'll have already pressed those seams under, but if they've come out at all, just repress them and then pin them together so that the folded edge under edges match up exactly. And then once you've done that, top stitch the turning gap together along the edge. Do it close to the edge, only about an eighth of an inch from the turned under edge. And this will hold the turning gap closed. Once you've sewn it together, it will be like that. And then the lining is complete. Now push the lining back inside the bag. Because you've boxed those corners together, the lining will stay nicely inside. Now the second row of tacking stitches that you put on the handles just to keep them straight, you can remove these now. Do this carefully, making sure that you don't cut the velvet. So just use a seam ripper for this or a small pair of scissors to just trim those stitches. Then work all the way round and trim off the tacking stitches off the other side. and just remove any loose threads. You can now take off any labels that are left over because you won't need them anymore. Now arrange it so that that top seam, the one that joins the outer to the facing, lies right on the top edge. Put your hand inside the pocket, so just undo the zip, just to make sure that the pocket is facing downwards. Because sometimes with all the turning right outside and inside, it'll come up and you don't want to be sewing the pocket into this stitching. So now arrange the seam by rolling it between your fingers. So this is the seam that joins the outer to the facing that the handles is coming out of. Roll that between your fingers and give it a press so it lies right on the top edge. Because you pressed it open earlier before you sewed the hole in the lining, this mean, makes this a little bit easier to do. And make sure that the handles are facing upwards away from the bag and give it a little press all the way along. Once you've done that, top stitch all the way around the top of the bag. This holds the facing on the inside and also adds some decoration. I work my top stitch a quarter of an inch from the top of the bag. And you can see it holds it really nicely inside and gives a nice finish to the top of your bag. Now your velvet shopper is now finished. You can see it's got beautiful lining with that handy pocket. The velvet facing that goes onto the inside just gives it that really extra luxury touch. So you're ready now to go shopping with your beautiful luxury velvet shopper. Making the bag charms. There are enough pieces to make two bag charms, a front and a back for each one. 
Cut the cord that's listed in the instructions in half and use one length for each. Take the cord and fold it in half so the short ends meet and then place it onto one corner of the front of your bag charm. Extend the ends by half an inch beyond the edge to make them extra secure. I've placed my cord diagonally across the top left hand corner but you could put it in the centre of the top edge if you prefer. I just like it to be diagonal. Place it diagonally across and pin it into place, pinning through the velvet and into the cord at the top. Now tack it into place across the top and then a little further down as well. This is just to keep it straight during assembly. Remove the labels and put the charm front and the charm back right sides facing, Make sure, making sure they're both the same way up so that you've got the top edges at the top edges. And then pin it together all the way around. Now you need to leave a turning gap, a one inch turning gap is about right, so if you mark the centre of one side, doesn't matter which side, and then if you measure half an inch above and below this, that's the one inch turning gap. You can now stitch it together all the way around, start at one side of the turning gap, stitch all the way around and stop at the other one. Once you've done that, Trim the corners off just to remove the bulk so that it will fold out neater and have nice, nicer corners. So tr trim off the corner and then a little bit either side just to remove the fabric bulk from these areas. When you get to the corner where the cord is, trim off the fabric but careful not to trim off the cord. The extra cord that extends beyond the seam allowance is to stop it getting pulled out. So leave that cord sticking out. Once you've done that, turn it right sides out by putting your finger inside the turning gap and then pushing one corner up through. It will all come out and actually the velvet turns out right sides out quite nicely because it's smooth. But just do it slowly and then push your fingers in each of the corners to push them out so that the corners are lying right on the edges. And then use a turning tool or a turning implement to turn the right sides out. I'm using the ends of my scissors here because they're rounded scissors, they're not too sharp once they're together. Remove that second row of tacking stitches you put in because the cord now needs to be facing outwards and then you can push out the rest of the corners. Just push out the corners gently so that you make sure you don't split the stitches or the fabric. So use something rounded and not too sharp. Now, put your charm onto your pressing mat and press it so that those seams are lying right on the edge. Make sure the edges of the folded gap are turned under. And then pop a pin just in the turning gap just to hold those down. Now top stitch all the way around the edge. This will close the turning gap and also add some decoration and give it a neater finish around the edge. So that's one charm finished. Take the split ring and thread the cord through the split ring all the way around and then it's finished. You've done one charm, make the other charm in exactly the same way. Now you can use your charms to attach to your bag. You could put them around the handle by threading it through the slip ring or you could attach one or the other one onto the end of the zip slider or you could attach them your keys to put in your bag or anything that you want to be able to find. And there it is, all finished.